Altavia 1 is an 80 mile high level route which runs through the eastern Dolomites in Italy. Altavia simply means the high route and this high route passes through some of the finest scenery the Dolomites has to offer. Join me as I take on this challenging and breathtaking hike through huge forests and other intimidating mountain passes, surrendering to nature, its raw beauty and the lessons it gives along the way. Welcome to the high route and welcome to the Dolomites. It's just before seven o'clock. Got my bag packed. I'm going to just square the tent away. There was a lot of condensate. There was, look, there's not a breath of wind. So there was a lot of condensation. My quilt got wet, but I just used my sponge this morning. Got rid of two or three full sponges of water. So that takes the weight out of it. Is the outside wet? Yeah, give it a shave. And it should be reaped. So you what, mate? I'm quite peckish because of, <laughs> uh, of not having me, uh, being able to have my food and that. It's making me quite peckish, but it's just, it, I'm not gonna die. On this route, there's two ways to go. And one of the routes doesn't have a hut on it. So I'm not going to take that one because I need to fill my water. I don't have my filter on me, as you know, or you might not know. So I'm going to take that route. It might be a little bit longer. It's a bit of a detour and it goes to a hut. So I'm going to take that route and then I can fill my water bottle up, maybe get something to eat. And then we, we crack on. Right, let's get this tent squared away. I'm looking forward to this. Day two in the Dolomites. Let's go. We're doing it. I can't believe I was going to tap out because I didn't have a cook kit and a, and a filter. It's a little bit harder and I've got to be a little bit more, I've got to plan it a little bit more, but we're doing it. I'm doing it. I'm glad I set off. I couldn't have survived on without these huts though. I would have been so hungry and I would have had to have so, so, uh, cold soaked my food in water that isn't filtered and just go like that for like six days or however long it's going to take me. It's just, I. Uh, definitely get ill and then i'll be up and uh, it's working out all right is what i'm trying to say i'm happy about it day two optimism high morale high feeling good mate could run it come on dolomites what you got for me i forget easily don't i yesterday i was <laughs> it was a tough slog yesterday but this is it they're in it the full cycle i'm up and ready for it Ah, lovely little camp spot this, come here. No trace, obviously. I ain't got a trace to leave. Forgot all my traces. A strong chance I'll never ever camp there again. And that's the beauty of it. Look at that, man. Up early. They say if you get up early, especially in the later sections as you get into the northern Dolomites, you've got a great chance of seeing some proper wildlife. Ibex or whatever they call them, like the goats and deer, the marmots. I've already seen a couple of marmots. But I'm all for it. I'm here for it. The insect life has been amazing. Loads of bees, loads of different types of butterflies. And birds. Oh, look at it, mate. There we go. Get him done early in the day. Before there's anyone around and while legs are still fresh.
So in the guidebook, that's the way to go up and over here. But there's an alternate route in the guidebook that goes around here. And I've got to take this one because there's a hut on it and there's nothing that way. I've got a couple of mouthfuls of water and that's all I've got. And <laughs> it's going to take a while to get over there. And once I get up there, the sun starts belting me and I start sweating and I've got no water. And it's not wise going that way. So onward this way. And I get to follow a river down here as well, which is apparently quite nice. And I get to a hut where I can fill my water up and if they've got anything on offer to eat, I'll just fill my boots because you don't know when your next meal's coming from in this, well, I don't. So this does add a little bit more time onto the trek, but what you're gonna do, can't, I, you know, I'm just fortunate enough to be able to do it with these huts, so I've got to stick to them. It looks like another stunning day. I've not had signal for ages, so I've not checked the forecast or anything this isn't what it was forecast it was forecast thunderstorms when i was checking before i set off so touch wood <laughs> we don't get no thunderstorms and we can just have a nice easy nice weather good hike please cut to me cuddling myself under a rock no shite shite banter god thirsty mate thirsty Here we go, this is more like it. Nice and worn in. Counterweight. I've ah. got cable wire. So a big bit of iron, love it. Oh, sturdy. That is sturdy. Get a view on this one as well. Latching locks. What a path, look at this mate. And I'm gonna be winding through these trees by the river. It's stunning, absolutely stunning. You can hear the cowbells, but you can't see cows. Oh, there they are, fruit. There you are. That's where we've come down off there. Uh, we skirted round here, over this river, and then that is the pass. We're heading up, up and over there. The first uphill. So we've been coming down most of the morning. This is our first bit of uphill. It looks like this ski slopes all uh, all into it. It's perfect at the moment because the sun hasn't quite poked its head above that mountain, so that's shading me. And it's quite cool, it's really cool actually. And that is making for perfect hiking. And I've just been crunching out the K's. <laughs> Getting some kilometres under my belt. So I believe that would be a snowblower. This is obviously Oh, it's steep up there, isn't it, man? It's steep here. This is obviously a ski route, and that is... Um, a, a, that blows the snow onto it. And that's mad. Just thinking of this, full of snow. Loads of people skiing and snowboarding down it. Now I'm boiling hot, hiking up it. <laughs> Madness. Gassy mate, this thing is so steep. Been going for a while, zigzagging. I've run out of water. 
then so that's it really is a good job I came this way I've just got to keep be vigilant on my maps and just try and work it to to these refugios or huts or whatever so that I can stay hydrated and also I've only had that one plate of pasta in the last couple of days but that's all right I can be calorie deficient as long as I stay hydrated and uh, keep my electrolytes in me I've got enough fat probably around my organs around my midriff to uh, to sustain me for a few days it's quite good actually <laughs> it's how you get into shape come do the Alta Via 1 with no food that'll do you stick your keto diet <laughs> uh, uh. ah dear me wow I don't know if it's open, I really hope it's open, it's only 9 o'clock in the morning there's like a, it looks almost vertical mate up there that's where I'm heading for some more leg pumping but I must get something to eat mate or at least just some water would be just fantastic alright lads Medic! Medic! Did God send that up? Fill my water bottle, got a slice of strudel and a coffee, and that's made good. Don't matter if I don't have anything for the rest of the day, water's my main thing. Look at this for a, the elevation, man. You're quick. <laughs> a bit to go as well calves are burning a bit but I'm feeling strong as I said yesterday it's hard to talk to the camera because the elevation's so steep you can't catch your breath so I'm talking like this and no one wants that so there's your update <laughs> sun is well and truly out now It's surprising how much harder it is with the sun belting on you. <laughs> I guess because sweat's coming out of me and I'm losing a lot of electrolytes and I know that I say the word electrolytes too much but what are you going to do? Electrolytes! Uh, and that sort of sets me up for cramping and stuff but I mean I'm so far so good. There's one good to sweat it out a bit, doesn't it? Look at views mate though. I just keep stopping looking back, is that lake in the middle of that delve there? Whew. Damn, put so much work in for like hardly any distance. It's nuts. Whoa. I don't know how many more I've got of them in me today. That's where we're heading to the hut on the top of there. Oh, sheer drop, mate. Nah. <laughs> nah. I'm not having that. If you go through a tunnel, you come out, it's just off these edges, is sheer drop, mate. Unbelievable, Jeff. There's all these tunnels, look. Proper good tunnels, look. 
from the war. Let's learn a bit. Lagazui is the highest point of the hike, lying at an elevation of 2,835 metres. It's accessible by cable car, so don't expect to be alone while you're up here, but the views and history make it a worthwhile destination. From 1915, the high peaks of the Dolomite Range were an area of fierce mountain warfare. In order to protect their soldiers from enemy fire and hostile alpine environment, both Austro-Hungarian and Italian military engineers constructed fighting tunnels which offered a degree of cover and allow better logistical support. In addition to building underground shelters and covered supply routes for their soldiers, both sides attempted to break the stalemate of trench warfare by tunneling under no man's land and laying large quantities of explosives beneath the enemy's position. Today a lot of the caves are open to the public, but just be careful where you step because it's Ed Sheer and drops. Actual snow, cold snow in August. Love it. Look at that. You want to build a snowman. <laughs> Absolute scenes. Look at view as well. Look at this. I'm uh, really hungry as well. This is unbelievable, Jeff. I'm very grateful. Uh, we'll talk about what I've done to get here and what my plans are next while I'm not surrounded by people. But for now, a panini, whatever this delicious looking thing is, and a brew. Thank you. With these views, mate. Look. You can see the path that I'm going to be taking is this yellow one, the little lake by the side of it, up and through here. I mean, I'm still high up in the mountains and that's where I've come from. The nosebleed section. A lot of rocks mate, a lot of rocks. Thankfully I've got these little signs, little red and white signs that sort of lead me in the right direction. But it can be slow going over all these things. Knackered mate, it's forecast to rain later. And also thunderstorms tomorrow, so I'm trying to get as much done as I can while it's dry. Up oh, this valley valley of stones very rare that you get moments of like flat but they are appreciated very much this is a techie scramble up here there's going to be hands involved I have to put my hiking poles away Let's see how we get on <laughs> love it mate absolutely love it it's because it's not wet, it's not slippy, so it's quite easy. Uh, there's a lot of handholds, works out just right. Oh, the skies are looking very ominous and dark, right on cue. Whoa, as I was just about to say, you won't want to stack it off here. I tripped. That would have been brilliant. Well, it wouldn't have been brilliant, but it would have been, I could appreciate the irony in that kind of a death. I would have become a meme, wouldn't I? The you don't want to trip guy. Keep it, mate. This lad. Probably that was his. That was his wall, wasn't it? First one to scale it or something. Well done. Loads of uh, rope holds in it. Look at that, mate. Snow capped mountains, green mountains. Unbelievable, Jeff. So, where we've come from? We're going around this unit. I remember looking at this from way up there, and it is crazy. That I'm here now, <laughs> it's just nuts. Glorious. Okay, this for a stunning path, just snaking my way through these green fields and trees with all the mountains. <laughs> it's crackers, mate. It's like beauty overload and like majestic overload it's like every 
everywhere I look is a like a computer screen saver, you know. It's mad. Sometimes it's almost like not real because it's so perfect. It's bonks, mate. <laughs> Absolutely bonkers. Right, so I've got a liter of water, so I've still got half of my other water with my leckies in it, and I've got another liter on, so should be alright for water for, for a good while. And I'm just carrying them, uh, I'm carrying a week's worth of food that I can't eat, which is absolutely mad as. Uh, I could cold soak it for a while, but I just don't fancy it, mate. I don't fancy it. I'm not desperately in need of it either, so. I'm just carrying a week's worth of food for now. But that's fine, isn't it? It's good training for legs anyway. Might do it more often, just carry things I don't really need or use. A week's worth of dry, freeze dried meals though can get quite heavy. Doesn't matter, does it? Look at that. There's some geezer rock climbing on it. Outdoorsy AF. Look at this path as well. Are you having it? Totally Lord of the Nerds, innit? Down here. And then I think up there. <laughs> I can hear running water. It's not gonna be, able, I can't get in it, but I'm definitely gonna just wet my face, cool myself down a little bit. Oh, 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 brand new by the way. <laughs> oh, cool, core temperature down, I need it, mate. Where have we come from? I don't even know. Really steep descent. And then we're coming up for the same on the other side. But upwards, ascent, I think they call it. Wait, wet out, just dripping all in me uh, chest bar. God, look at that. Look at that. Can't be mad at it though, look at it. Right, put your awakes. I've got to tackle this. This bit's really cool. It's a mixture of these white rocks and the green. And everywhere you look, there's just views. It's a stunning, stunning section. This high end bit of clobber, <laughs> little turnstile to stop you getting zapped by a lecky fence. Look, <laughs> good stuff 7.2 out of 10. This way, right? That's another stop there. Didn't get anything from there. I've got a litre of water. There was it's getting it's getting too pricey mate because I've taken a week's worth of food so I didn't have to buy food. I was trying to keep all this on a budget and it's been a bit of a, a write off having to buy a new rain jacket and having to buy food and the water is ridiculous mate. Five euros for a litre of water. Boof. So I'm just trying to ration stuff and eat like sparingly. It's only for a few days, isn't it? If I start to feel real bad and start bonking and all that, then I'll have to have some, but for now, I'm just going on rations and just enjoying scenery. Anyway, I've left there. I'm gonna put in a, it's getting on a little bit, but I'm gonna put in a few more hours, get away from this bit where there's humans. I'm gonna get up here over a few ridges and then apparently it opens up into like fieldy bits, like grass and <laughs> I can tell Ed's gone, mate. Fieldy bits, like grass. Uh, uh, Ed's going a bit, like only a bit. I'm, I'm eight, it's only twenty percent going, ten percent going. That's all right though, and that's the plan. I'm going to get a bit further away, a couple of hours under my belt and then look for somewhere to pitch up. I get a place as good or if not better than I did last night. Better. 
mate, we're gonna traverse along here. It's all a bit steep for camping, like, so we'll have to keep going. Keep going, we'll find somewhere. We're gonna traverse around here and then it's up and over there that's the first pass of I think there's gonna be four or five passes in this section. I'm crunching it out today. It's like I'm possessed. <laughs> I'm just going for it. I'm loving it, but I'm not talking much on here because uh it is you're just blowing out your ass. I'm talking now because this bit's relatively sort of straight. But some of the places are popular so there's a lot of hikers as well and it's the elevation up and down I don't, I've just got to focus solely on that I can't be like I'm not ambling along a country lane spilling my thoughts out I'm really focusing on this hike so uh, apologies for the lack of banter but the views surely make up for it the beautiful views no we prefer the banter we don't care about the views oh come on There's that amazingly shaped rock that I passed. We've come all the way, traversed round here, behind this one, and through to here. And there's me cows giving it big licks. Zigzagging up here, and then over the top of here, I don't know what the views are gonna be like. Apparently there's some good views. On the third one of these, there's four in total, I believe. On the third one, that's where the views are, the real good views. That was really difficult coming up that pass, like, oh, it's taking it out of me. It's nearly six o'clock, been in saddle since seven this morning. Ooh, what have I eaten? I've had a strudel, had my little panini and a slice of cake, that's it. And that's all I'll have, I don't have out else. Never mind. I've seen some water down here and I was thinking up there, I was like, oh man, I'd love to have a swim. I've got some like eco-friendly shampoo, just have a proper wash, clean my t-shirt and that. But then I look down there and there's just lot <laughs> for the size of the water thing, puddle, whatever, Ed's going. For the size of the water, there's just loads of cows around it. So it's gonna be full of cow shat in it. I don't want to be, I don't want to be washing myself in cow shit is what I'm basically trying to say. Oh my, literally, it's literally every corner is, like I said before, like a, like a laptop screensaver. Look at that, stunning isn't it? I think I'm stopping here. Oh. Main path's just over there, so no one's going to see me up main path. He's pushing towards seven o'clock. <laughs> I mean, that's my views. I'm not going to grumble with that. And I've just been looking at the map and I'm heading over that way. And it looks to get quite rocky, bouldery. If I struggle to get a pitch for my tent, I'm gonna regret not stopping here. And the weather looks like it could change as well. So, here we go. This is my second, uh, second camp. Let's go, set it up. There it is. Home sweet home. It was the right decision, mate. Look at it. Nice and calm. It's supposed to be thunder and rain. It doesn't look... Uh, well, we're all set up now anyway, so it can do what it wants. There's a lot of stone under here, so that pegs out proper. Uh, look at that one. That'll do, actually. Solid. In fact, now I'm getting to grips with it more. It goes up faster than the Lanshan too. It's uh, easier to put up. Unbelievable, Jeffrey. So tired, mate. Just gonna get my head down, I think. Early night. Read my guidebook, that's what I like to do. 
read my guidebook and then an early night. I'll move in anyway, let's get moved in. You can see it coming across, look at that. It's gonna be a wet one. It's a good job I set up when I did, perfect time. Thunder and lightning as well. <laughs> Here we go. Real talk, innit? it? Thunder and lightning, mate. Thankfully, I got this tent up in the nick of time. It just felt right to pitch here. The only problem is, is that I'm in a little bit of a delve. So will persistent rain fill it? I hope not. I hope not. It should be all right. It should be okay. Hopefully it's not persistent and it passes. There you go. It's just thunder, mate. It's just thunder and heavy rain. Hailstoning. <laughs> it's hailstones. I thought it sounded quite heavy. The calm after the storm. Like in life, the storm eventually passed and calm returned. This was a special moment and it gave me hope and optimism for the journey ahead, both on this trail and in life in general. Right, map time. This is where I woke up. I believe we hit the trail it was a beautiful morning and we headed down this way through the valley these were my options here I could have gone this way up and over this ridge which was quite a way to go and join up with the path here but instead I took this slightly longer version um, down through these woods by this river around up very steep up here and to this refugio here where thankfully i was able to fill my water bottles up uh, get a cake and a coffee and that's the reason that i took this i would have gone this way but this way was stunning i'm sure i didn't miss much and uh I had to do it to get some water and stuff from the refugio and coming up here the views looking back was stunning absolutely beautiful really gorgeous section this as we head up here to the highest part of the trail now this is where it got really complicated like just looking at this map i was like what what is actually how do you make sense of it and which way do i go I came in from here, right, and then I got to this. That was the first conundrum. I was like, uh, hmm, which way to go? You can go this way. Uh, you can go this way, you can go this way. There's lots of different ways to go here. Climb up here because I wanted to have a look in these little caves and the things about the war. And also there was a refugio right on the top of the hill there. Back down here. And then, I was off this way, look. That's me, you lot can keep it. This is just the way I went. There was some nice steep sections along here. But as always, just absolutely stunning. Right, then when I got here, so you can go this way and there's a real steep bit or a via ferrata on this section. So I went this way and around and then down here beautiful it was down here and i really put some uh, miles on my boots today lots of elevation as well another refugio there didn't stop in that one off i went followed this around this was absolutely stunning and then 
yeah there's a few passes up here so you are up and down and around here somewhere i believe was where i pitched for the night and so i'm there hailstones lightning thunder the whole kit and caboodle it's forecast torrential rains for tomorrow so join me on the next episode thanks for watching if you're not subscribed already please consider subscribing hit the bell notification down there to be notified when i next upload and thanks very much